pregame show on Fox. It is an absolutely gorgeous night in San Francisco, California. These fans have been having so much fun from game six to game seven to game one last night. Whether it was the Cardinals in the NLCS or the Tigers in World Series game one, they've been waving those towels and having fun here in San Francisco. And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. This is game two of the 2012 World Series. Last night, the Giants beat the Tigers behind a gritty performance from Barry Zito. Good relief work by Tim Lincecum and then an offensive showing from Pablo Sandoval. Now, when Tim slides in here, we're going to talk about a lot of the breaks that the Giants have been getting, and there's no doubt. But make no mistake, they've made the most of those breaks and they've outscored their opposition over the last four games, 28 to four. But Tim, you start looking at some of the ways the ball has bounced for the Giants. It is impressive and it is a reason why it certainly helped them win game one. And no question about it, rarely does the momentum from the LCS carry over to the World Series, but it did for the Giants last night. It seems like they are willing the hops to go their way. Two out, nobody on in the third inning. Angel Pagan, ball hits the bag, goes into left field instead of a single. He has a double. They are getting the breaks, but they're making those breaks. Yeah, that was the start of three more runs. That led to a hit by Scudero and a two-run shot by Sandoval. Meanwhile, the pitching matchup tonight's interesting. Madison Bumgarner gets the start. He's 0-2 this postseason. And for Detroit, a guy named Doug Fister. His name may not be Verlander, but this guy can pitch. Yeah, don't let that 10-10 and 10 record fool you. I mean, this guy can get you out. He's got great stuff. He has two no decisions this postseason. He's trying to even this series before we go to Detroit. The Giants have been lighting up a scoreboard. They can also light up a pinball machine. Here's the who.
is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance by Direct TV. Don't just watch TV, Direct TV. Give a look at the Taco Bell starting lineup for the Tigers. And don't forget, this World Series, if a player steals a base, Taco Bell is giving everyone in America one free Doritos Locos Taco. Go to hashtag steal the taco. So here we go. Sometimes you got to live Moss, and it's the same look as last night. Austin Jackson leads off in center. Omar Infante bats second at second. Miguel Cabrera hits third. Prince Fielder cleans up Delman Young and left Johnny Peralta the shortstop. He homered last night. Abasail Garcia is the rookie right fielder. Gerald Laird is the catcher. And Doug Fister pitches and bats ninth against a left-hander who hopes he has found the flaw that has led to those numbers, an 0-2 record this postseason. Madison Bumgarner has not started a game since game one against the Cardinals in the league championship series. Stay on top. That's the most frequent phrase a starting pitcher hears. And he's been great at home, 10 and 3. No other National League pitcher has won that many games from his home mound. Here is Jackson, and pitch one is up and away, ball one. Austin last night had two hits. And overall is hitting 317 this postseason. What a difference a year makes. Under 200 last year. They talked about the changes that he's made with his approach in the batter's box at the plate. The work he's done with Lloyd McClendon has really paid off here in 2012. At 300 during the regular season and has a 2-1 count. Infante next and then Miguel Cabrera. strike and it's two and two. Just up and out of the strike zone, a full count. Austin Jackson struck out 47 fewer times this year than he did last year. Last year, he have swung at that pitch, not this year. A 3 2. Chop foul. This opening inning is always brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Glad you're with us tonight and throughout this World Series on Fox. Jackson waits for another 3 2. Strikes out. Home plate umpire Dan Ayasonia early gives Bumgarner the high strike. Four seam fastball. He was on top of that one. There's Dan Ayasonia. I'll show you the rest of the umpires in this top of the first is Omar Infante. Stands in. One for four last night. Strike one. Field and Culbreth is at first. Brian Onora at second. Joe West is down the left field line. Jerry Davis in right. Brian Gorman over at third. And that foul tip got the mask of Buster Posey. It's 0 and 2. First changeup of the night by Bump Gardner, whose nickname is Mad Bum. M A D B U M. The O2. Two out. Back to back strikeouts to start the night. As Dan Iasonia had to wait to make sure Posey hung on to that foul tip. And here is the defense brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Blanco in left, Pagan in center, Hunter Pence in right with Sandoval, Crawford, Scudero, Belt on the infield, Buster Posey the catcher, Bumgarner in the middle. Every season starts at Dick's. Here is Cabrera. 
Miguel won for three last night with an RBI. Triple crown winner takes a pitch down and away ball one. Joe, we talked about it last night. This is what the Giants want to do with Cabrera. They'd love to split Cabrera and Fielder, have Cabrera make the last out of an inning, and Fielder lead off another inning. Here is a 1 0 pitch from Bumgarner. Strike one. Manager Jim Leland of the Tigers does not like to make excuses and goes out of his way to say, I want to credit the Giants for the job they did on the mound, the job they did at the plate last night. But he does believe that layoff, the five day layoff after the ALCS, contributed to a sluggish start in game one. And now they've gone in order in game two as Cabrera grounds out to short after a half. A scoreless frame put up by Bumgarner, no score. Taco Bells, steal a base, steal a taco. Liv Moss. And now the Taco Bell starting lineup for the San Francisco Giants. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. Angel Pagan leads off in center. Scudero bats second at second. Pablo Sandoval hits third. Buster Posey cleans up. Hunter Pence, Brandon Belt, Gregor Blanco in left. Brandon Crawford is the shortstop pitching and batting ninth. Madison Bumgarner, and there's the right-hander, Doug Fister. And you look at the numbers this postseason. He does not have a win, but he's pitched well enough to deserve two, and here's his scouting report. The reason that Doug has been on the disabled list twice this year, that violent delivery, a rare combination of a guy who throws sinkers to contact and is a strikeout pitcher, he does that a lot with that curveball. And the home plate umpire is very important. And from an umpiring standpoint, you really have to wait for the fastballs to develop because of his late movement. Excellent late movement on the fastball. Angel Pagan is first up for the Giants. Shows bunt, takes a ball outside. We saw the high strike at the top of the first inning from Dan Iasonia, the home plate umpire. Believe me, these teams have scouting reports on umpires that they go over prior to every game. Right. Tendencies as that one comes back over the plate. You can see that good late movement. Pagan let it go by, strike one. That's an example of what Doug Fister will try to do to left handed hitters all night long. Now a breaking ball. The curve drops in, strike two. 
He is 6'8", 200 pounds. And a great athlete, says Jim Leland. Pagan trying to slow him down. Good strategy. The count one and two. And that misses inside, two and two. It was an absolute steal for Dave Dombrowski to get Fister from Seattle July 30th last year. The front of the rotation guy, and he starts his night with a strikeout. Tigers defensive lineup is brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Delman Young in left. Austin Jackson is in center. Abasail Garcia is in right with Cabrera, Peralta, Infante, and fielder Gerald Laird. Gets the start behind the plate. Avila last night. Fister in the middle of it every season. Starts at Dix. And here's a guy who in five days will turn 37. Marco Scudero, who has seven multi-hit games this postseason and has hit in 11 straight. That's after going 0 for 8 in the first two. It's 2-0. It's that 2-3 combination that did it to the Cardinals in the NLCS and did it last night to that man, Justin Verlander. Two and one. In fact, it was the top of the order that did in Verlander. First four hitters were a combined 10 for 16. Everybody had multi-hits. Amazing. That's a chopper tough play, Peralta. Good play, Peralta, two out. Now tonight's Ford keys to the game. From Fister's standpoint, the Tigers are saying, Doug, get us back home, one and one. And from the Giants, keep trusting your instincts. And over the last four games, they have been remarkable. Great reaction for Pablo Sandoval, who's hitting 370. And last night had a four for four night with three home runs in his first three at bats. Fifth time it's happened, fourth guy to do it in a World Series game. And he pops it in the air to left. Delman Young, a long run, he's there. And it's a one, two, three, first. Doug Fister, let's go to the second. Game two in San Francisco, no score.
Better. Beautiful. A look at Covey Cove out beyond the right field wall as Prince Fielder steps in. That's what he's hitting this postseason in his career during the postseason, just 202. Five homers, 11 RBIs, and trying to get something started. For the Tigers in the second. And a strike from Bumgarner. Madison is only 23 years old. And as Bruce Bochy, his manager, told us, it's easy to forget sometimes that he's only 23. Struggling with his mechanics and his delivery earlier this postseason. He lets up on that pitch down and away. A ball and a strike. Tenth overall pick back in 07. Is a World Series game winner at 21 years old when he won game four two years ago over Texas 4 0. That hits Fielder. And down to first is Prince, the first base runner of the night. Ball getting away from Bumgarner, and he dropped down a little bit, the ball tailing inside. What do we mean when we say stay on top? Every pitcher hears that all the time. And when you're on top of the ball, it goes down. When you're under the ball, it stays up. It's that simple. That pitch was up because he was under the pitch. Here's Delman Young. One on, nobody out. Delman last night, two out of four, and he was the MVP of the last round, the ALCS. He'll DH when this series goes to Detroit on Saturday. Strike one and a lot of first pitch strikes. Jackson struck out and Fonte struck out. Cabrera grounded out in the first. It batsman to start the second. Now the 0 1. Hard hit and fair. Pass third and down the left field line. It's Fielder digging around second, going to third. They're going to bring him. The relay to the plate is in time. They've got him. And Jim Leland's going to come out and argue on that double by Delman Young. Yeah, that can't happen, Joe. You can't make the first out at home plate. When it's close like that, even though Fielder may have been in there, he was out. He was. That tag was made on the back before the left foot got to home plate. I think if Gene Lamont had that to do over again, he would have held him with Peralta coming up. Great call by Dan Iasonia, the home plate umpire. It's out 7-4-2. As the left fielder Blanco missed the initial cutoff man. And it was Scudero backing up that threw to the plate to get the out. Now Peralta pops it on the infield for Belt. Two out. Well, that's why you have a double cutoff man. If the first one is missed, the second one backs up to make the play. So the shortstop was out. There's a throw by Blanco. Misses the first one. Scooter to back up. Nails Fielder at home plate. Cannot make the first out at home plate. So the double in the middle of a hit batsman and a pop-up. And Abasail Garcia swings and misses. A little better jump on the fastball tonight from Bumgarner than we saw in game one of the NLCS. Yeah, I think he's fine. That uh, Staying on top of the fastball, I think he's doing that thus far. You see the frustration for Prince Fielder. Sent all the way from first base on that double down the left field line. Count 0-1 on Garcia with two out in the inning. One ball, one strike. Seems like Scudero's everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, I was just going to say, Scudero's right in the middle of it again. And his throw was good enough and a real good athletic tag by Buster Posey. To get the tag on Fielder before he touched home plate. And now a 1-1 count to Garcia. 2-1. That throw had to be made inside the line. 
particularly with a guy like Fielder running. Prince weighs 300 pounds, and he's wide. And that made the throw that much tougher. The inside, so Posey could handle it with the slap tag. Two balls and a strike. Runner at second, two out. And Bumgarner brings it. Garcia follows it straight back. Here's Gene Lamont sending him as that ball took a funny bounce down the line. But then Blanco to Scudero to Posey. That good throw inside the line and Fielder's out. Now a 2-2 count on Garcia with a runner at second. Bumgarner's defense helps him as the defense helped out Zito last night. With Blanco making two good catches out and left. It's been a real plus for the Giants this postseason and Garcia. The 21 year old steps out. Added to the roster on August 31st. Started the season at single A. Was in Lakeland and double A Erie. Got to the big leagues and here he is starting the first two games of the World Series. Two and two the count. Inning over. Strikeout number three. And a good defensive play to cut down fielder at the plate keeps game two scoreless after an inning and a half. Series on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Well, we have witnessed the first ever 7-4-2 out at the plate. Come on. Strike to start the bottom of the second. And by seven, that's the number that's for scoring given to the left fielder. Four is the number given to the second baseman who is in the middle of it. Two is the catcher, and that's the first one in the history of World Series play. Unbelievable. 
credit Scudero. How many second basemen would be over there? Here is a 1 1 to Posey. Good breaking ball for strike two. That curve just dropped in to Buster, who is hitting 204 this postseason, two out of four last night in game one. Hunter Pence on deck. Base hit. Right field, and Buster Posey is on to start the second. And let's go back to that play at the plate. A.J. Pierzynski, a current catcher in the big leagues, is joining us from out in left field. What do you see out there? Well, first of all, when the ball goes in the left field corner, it's hard on a third base coach to decide what to do. You see him overrun it right there in Lamont. And sometimes you wonder, why did he send him right here? Second and third, no outs with Johnny Peralta coming up. And then Buster Posey, who everyone knows, was told not to block the plate. If you watch the slide right here, Prince Fielder's knee is bent instead of straight, and he kind of is up in the air. And also, then you, the guy on deck has to tell him to slide to the outside because of the fact that Buster Posey's not going to try and box the plate, especially with Prince coming down the line. First pitch is a ball to Hunter Pence. Plus, A.J., when you receive a ball from the left side of the field, Scudero and Scudero in that particular instance, you're going to stay inside the line. There's no way to block the plate with Fielder because if you block the plate, then that's going to obscure the throw from Scudero. No, but the throw, I thought Tim was inside enough where he could have held his ground. If you watch, Buster takes a step to the inside and frees up a whole lane for Prince to slide to the outside and do the swipe tag you, with his you've hand. Got to, you've got to throw it inside the line. Fielder's running inside the line. I mean, if you throw it to where Buster is blocking the plate, it hits Fielder. And goes a rock. That's the way I saw it. Okay. I just think that you have the ability as a catcher to kind of keep your leg in there and not take that slight step to the inside and clear up the whole plate and kind of make force him to the area of the plate you want him to be, which would be to the outside. I know Buster had, Buster had the horrible injury uh, last season, but that's just as a catcher, and you know Tim is catching. Sometimes that's par for the course, and you got to take it as part of the game. Two balls, two strikes on Pence, and a breaking ball is foul. And the other point that A.J. brought up was there wasn't a ton of help from the on-deck hitter. That was Peralta, who came out of the on-deck circle a little later and wasn't giving any direction really definitively to Fielder, who was coming down the line to go to the outside part of the plate. Here's a 2-2. Fly ball into center, and that's Jackson one out. Well, when you see the catcher inside the line, you should go to the outside part of the plate. But it's got to be a straight in slide because the straight in slide is much quicker in getting there than hooking, and you never hook into a catcher anyway. Brandon Belt with one on one out will dig in hitless last night. And as AJ mentioned, and this will be one more look, but that's Prince who gets tagged by Buster Posey and AJ talked about it. You gotta assume everybody knows that Buster was injured in a terrible collision at the plate last May. On the 25th of May, here's a 0-1 pitch down and in one ball, one strike. Blanco, who made those two catches last night in game one, corralled that ball after it took a funny hop. And got it to Scudero, who got it to the plate. Now the count one and two on Belt. What shouldn't be lost in this inning, Tim, is what you said about Posey last night. He was pulling off pitches last night. He got a couple of hits. One of them went to right. His base hit here was shot through the right side to start this inning. Yeah, with a guy like Buster, when you're pulling off the ball, you, you ought to try to treat a lot of strikes like there are two strikes on you. Buster is very adept at going the other way with two strikes on him as he did to get to first base. Now they're two strikes on Belt. With Blanco on deck. A strikeout gets Brandon Belt. Second strikeout for Fister. And the inning will get to Blanco with a run at first two out now. Boy, that's a good changeup. Make that a split. 
from Fister. The ball going down and away. And Brandon Belt out in front. Blanco has been struggling. His overall average this postseason, 200. Since game three of the NLCS, he's just two out of his last 19. Strike one. Lead off hit by Posey. Pence. Little pop up. Belt struck out. Strike one on Blanco. He tried to hold up, could not. Strike two. AJ talking uh, before the game about how Fister jumps at you when he's from the stretch. Very quick feet. And he makes hitters do this a lot. Check their swing. When he jumps, you commit sometimes too early. That's a ball high, one and two. Posey at first, two out. Fister. Watch Blanco just get a piece. While the top of the order was so good last night for the Giants in game one, the five through nine spots had just one RBI. And that belonged to the pitcher. Barry Zito. Yeah, the Giants were top heavy last night in their lineup. Now Blanco steps out before a one two pitch. Just one for 19, hitters five through nine. One on, two out. That hit, Fister is in the air and goes to center field for a base hit. And hopefully Fister's okay. I think it hit his glove. He got that glove up. We're talking about Jim Leland talking about his athleticism. You better be a good athlete in this situation. Watch the glove. No, he didn't get it. It did not get it up. Hit him on the side of the head. My gosh. Oh. Oh, boy. Mm. Oh, man. I think of Brandon McCarthy with the Oakland Athletics who had a similar pop about a month and a half ago. And we are hopeful that Brandon's all right. And obviously, Doug Fister. Man. Oh. He's still out there. He's going to throw a couple of pitches. You know, Joe, I, I think... And I never thought this before this year, but I think baseball is going to have to resort to helmets for pitchers like catchers wear. First base coach, the third base coach wear them. I think uh, something should be done next year because when a pitcher finishes his wind up or his stretch and he tells the trainer he's okay, right on the side, right side of the head. But I think ultimately that's what baseball will come to and I think properly. Brandon Crawford now with two on, two out. And somehow Fister's still on the mound. Good curveball misses low, ball one. Brandon Crawford, whose parents have been longtime San Francisco Giant season ticket holders. Now trying to excite them as he fouls it out of play left side, strike one. Waco the runner at first. Posey led off the inning with a base hit into right. And a 1 1 count on the number eight hitter, Brandon Crawford. Watch inside. Pretty good pitch called inside, ball two. Two and 
on the count. Two on, two out. That curveball is outside. Three and one. On deck is the pitcher, Bumgarner, who can handle the bat. Runners at first and second, two out, and a good breaking ball on three and one. Three straight breaking balls, and a breaking ball on a fastball count. Once you get that over, it's always good policy to come back with a fastball. Runners will go. And a foul on the play left side. Back to second, Posey. Back to first, Blanco. Runners go. And the breaking ball is high for ball four. First walk by Fister, and the bases are loaded with Bumgarner coming up. Remember, the pitchers for the Giants have been driving in runs. And it has happened in the last four straight games, starting with Zito in St. Louis in game five, with a bunt base hit for an RBI. And Vogelsong, then Kane. Low ball one. Gerald Laird, the catcher, is corralling that low fastball. And here it is. Four RBIs in four straight games. Vogel song a part of it. Kane in game seven. Last night, Zito in game one of this World Series. Zito's got a bunt base hit for an RBI and a clean one through the left side. Now Bumgarner pops it into shallow left and out goes Peralta to end the inning. That gave this crowd a rise. Two hits a walk in the inning, three left after two. In game two, no score.
sponsored by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. Third inning rolls in. No score. Madison Bumgarner back to work. It'll be Laird Fister. And then Austin Jackson, 8 9 and 1. Laird shows bunt, takes a ball. Gerald hit 282. Last year won it all with the Cardinals. He's one for 13 so far this postseason. There's a strike from Bumgarner. Home plate umpire Dan Isonia is wearing a microphone tonight and will let you in on the audio that occurred on that ball hit by Blanco off the head of Doug Fister last half inning. After Laird does something to start the frame, it's a 2 1 count. That last pitch, Madison Bumgarner, that ball flattened out on him. That's what uh, Dave Rigetti's looking for. Not too many pitches that flatten out on Bumgarner. Here is a 2 1. Popped up into left. Blanco is there. One out, and here's the audio. And that ball was hit back up the middle by Blanco. So then he got to throw a warm up pitch, said he was fine, and got out of the inning after issuing a walk to Crawford. He got Bumgarner, and now he's up there to bat. Fouls it back. Thanks, San Francisco, game two. No way to get him out of there. Courageous. We have a chance to meet these guys in the postseason, and we haven't met anybody any better. And Doug Fister. Classy guy. We had on last night in the fourth inning from the dugout. I said he's a steal, and he was for the Tigers. Tigers got him from Seattle. He was 3 and 12 with the Mariners. Picked him up on July 30th. Dave Dombrowski did it, one of the best front office men in the game, and he ended up finishing the season 8 and 1. With an ERA of 1.79, they went 2-1 and one in the postseason when the Tigers lost in the ALCS to Texas. Three of the four starting pitchers in this World Series for Dave Dabrowski and the Tigers were acquired via trade. Max Scherzer two years ago, Fister last year, and then Annabelle Sanchez this year. They get the ball in game three against Ryan Vogelsong. Scherzer who will work game four against Matt Kane. Two and two the count on Fister. That's out number two. And strikeout number four for Bumgarner. Everything appearing to be in sync for Madison Bumgarner here in the third inning. Four strikeouts, he's allowed the one hit that led to the play at the plate. The fielder was thrown out by a combination of Blanco and left and Scudero at second. Good tag by Posey. Ball one outside. Austin Jackson, part of that big deal. Scherzer was a part of that three way trade. Yankees. Another guy that the Tigers got in that deal is Phil Coke, who is now the closer for Detroit. Scherzer coming from Arizona. It's Coke. Here is a 2 0. Foul back 2 and 1. Last year, Austin Jackson had a high leg kick. This year, he doesn't. There's the high leg kick from 2011. He and Lloyd McClendon worked on it so hard this year. You could see he just gets up on the toes and strides forward. He hit 300 as a result. Good pitch by Bumgarner, and that breaking ball 
finds the strike zone two and two. With two out. Another strikeout, number five. And another one, two, three inning for Bumgarner. Bottom of the third inning in San Francisco. Giants bat, no score. Baseball, find your chance to win an all-new 2013 Malibu at WorldSeries.com slash Malibu. Angel Pagan, top of the order for the Giants, third inning, strike one. Struck out his first time up. Vister is struck out two and pitched around two hits and a walk last inning. Here is his 0-1. Good tailing pitch. Which he showed Pagan back in the first. That's strike two. That's vintage Fister right there. Inside corner, left handers give up on it. Arms up, strike two. Marco Scudero will follow and then Pablo Sandoval. Here's an 0 2. Down and in. Giants have outscored their opponent, the Cardinals and the Tigers, last night over the last four games, 28 to 4. And they've hit 15 home runs here in their last 15 games. Pagan grounds to Fielder. And this team, the Giants, they have been loose since the postseason began. They have fun. Brian Wilson usually is a part of it. So is closer Sergio Romo, who Romo bombs 
Last night's hero, Pablo Sandoval. Take it down to Aaron Andrews after the next pitch. She is on the Giants side. Kenny on the Detroit side. Great place in which to watch a World Series down in the World Series dugout. Strike one. The Scudero who grounded out his first time. Breaking ball stays up. One and one. Two for five in this World Series is Scudero after hitting 500 in the NLCS. Curveball is fouled, and let's go down to Aaron. They've been having fun since you joined us here at MLB on Fox. They certainly have Sergio Romo right over my shoulder. I'm afraid he's uh -oh. going to Romo bomb me. But I want to tell you, during batting practice, it's really the first time since I've been around the Giants that they were talking about they want to get out of San Francisco up two games to none. And, and I said to some of the players, you guys haven't really sounded like this. Even when you were playing the Cardinals, and they said, look, we really need to take advantage of this momentum that we have right there. Two out in the inning as Peralta takes care of Scudero. Okay. And Joe, just to mention, you're going to be joined by Sergio Romo, so you can ask him about that party-like atmosphere. He's on his best behavior right now. Boy, that was close. That's a dangerous play by a guy who is locked in, and the Giants holding their breath with that left hand. He's out. What an excellent call by first base umpire Fieldman Culver. He is two for two on two tough ones. Man. And then a good call at the plate by Iasonia. Here's Sandoval with two out, and that misses the outside corner ball one. Pablo flying to left his first time up and now grounds to the second baseman Infante. And a 1 2 3 inning for Doug Fister. Both pitchers are on tonight in game two. No score after three. Windows 8. 
and by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Landon with us is game number two. Goes into the fourth inning, and Fonte Cabrera, Prince Fielder, the two, three, and four hitters. With the Tigers scoreless game. Giants have two hits. Detroit's only hit was that double by Delman Young. Which led to the play at the plate. And obviously the out call with no score is Fielder was cut down. Some big bats coming up here in the fourth. Fonte is one for five in this World Series, 11 of 40. This postseason. There's a strike and it's one and one. Leading it off in Fonte. Lines one now one hop. Crawford can't make a play. And that'll be a base hit for Omar and Fonte. That'll bring in Miguel Cabrera. Triple crown winner and a guy who came up when he was 20 hit a walk off home run on June 20th. His major league debut won the World Series in 2003 with the Marlins traded to Detroit in December of 07. And now this season ridiculous numbers back to back batting titles going back to 2011 and the first triple crown winner since 1967. It was in that 2003 World Series when Roger Clemens knocked him down and then he homered to right field a pitch later and everybody thought well this guy has arrived and did he ever in a big way we talked to him prior to last night's game and you were talking about that at bat he remembered the pitch sequence and when you talk to guys around Cabrera they say his memory for specific at bats is unbelievable for detail I thought it was three and one he said uh uh it was two and two here's a 1 0 that's down and in 2 and 0 great Hank Greenberg leading the way for career postseason RBIs with Detroit Prince Fielder on deck as the Tigers down one game to nothing trying to Strike first here in game number two. Check on Infante. Cabrera with amazing ability to always stay balanced at home plate. Never gets off balance, can hit the ball out of the park in any direction. said last night there just aren't any holes in that swing no he's looking for an inside fastball right here to crank and he cranks it caught Sandoval over at third one out and it was loud can't hit it any harder Pablo Sandoval knows that that was a La Linea I mean, that was a line drive. <laughs> and Cabrera is now 0 for 2. One on, one out. But Cabrera, his good buddy, Pablo Sandoval over at third. Grabbed it. Those two are good friends, right, Ken Rosenthal? They are. They actually met as teenagers. Miguel Cabrera was winter league teammates with Sandoval's older brother, Michael, and they became buddies in one of Sandoval's prouder moments, 2008 Venezuelan Winter League. He beat Miguel Cabrera in a home run. Here's a pitch outside to Prince Fielder. One fifth of the Giants' roster. Is from Venezuela. Fielder steps out. Prince hit by a pitch and then was thrown out at the plate. 
in the second. In the air to left, back is Blanco on the track. Two out. And Infante back to first. And Blanco is covering a ton of ground out in left. Yeah, that was more routine than the two plays he made last night. One against Fielder, the other against Cabrera. Gives you an idea of the tremendous strength of Prince Fielder and Mad Bum happy about that one. Bumgarner making his fifth career postseason start, two and two. He had two wins in 2010. He's 0 and 2 this season, but much better here tonight. A check on Infante with Delman Young at the plate. And Ken Rosenthal asked manager Bruce Bochy of the Giants how he handled Bumgarner, who was upset with his stuff. To that loss in game one of the NLCS coming into this World Series and giving him the start. Great jump, throw over, and out to win the inning. He left a bit too soon, and Bumgarner cuts him down with a throw from Brandon Belt. He was out. Another good call by this umpiring crew, no score after three and a half. Buster Posey will lead it off for the Giants in the bottom of the fourth inning. No score. It'll be Posey, then Pence, then Belt against Fister. Breaking ball drops low. We're pleased to be joined by Sergio Romo, who is the closer now for the San Francisco Giants. And it has been so fun getting to know you during this postseason and keeping 
cameras on you because you have a blast down there, don't you? Uh, definitely, definitely having a blast. I mean, as you can see, I got some teammates already throwing stuff at me. Uh, very blessed to be in this position uh, to be able to experience uh, everything's going on in my life. I mean, what a ride so far, right? <laughs> yeah, and when we had a chance to meet with you, as Posey has a count now two and one, you talked about how your confidence grew during the course of the season, and you now know you're good enough to be a big league closer. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll tell you what, this year has been a very humbling experience for me. Uh, good and bad. Uh, the ups and downs, uh, what I've been through alongside my teammates, it, you know, as a group, that, yeah, it's been a lot. It's very humbling for me. But then personally, uh, you know, losing Wilson, uh, wow, right my way. Oh, almost got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> need a glove, fellas. Yeah. Need a glove. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but losing Wilson, I mean, it hurt us a lot. You know, it, the thing is, it's, it, it was just another way of challenging myself you know it was, it was another uh, task at hand another uh, I mean just challenge for me you know and my teammates they never backed you know they never backed away from me they never shined away from uh, having confidence and showing me that every day every time I got the ball so very proud to, to be that man so far yeah, that we're replaying that uh, play near the dugout without your glove but then I try you know Ser Sergio the one thing that stands out about you is I don't know of another major leaguer who appreciates the game of baseball at the big league level any more than you do I uh, credit that to my dad uh, he's still a big fan of the game he still plays himself down in Mexico uh, 55 years old so uh, I mean I credit my dad to <laughs> all of that stuff I mean the love of the game man, this baseball has been the most uh, consistent thing in my life outside of baseball and uh, you know it, it's, it's what a blessing this game has, uh, has been to me in my life and my family and I mean I tell you what my family my, from my dad my grandparents both grand, uh, both granddads uh, my brother my sister I mean, we've all found a way to play baseball or softball or something so it's definitely in the family yeah and you uh, as Posey flies out to left got under that ball jammed a little bit you told us that your grandfather you've had to convert from a Dodger fan <laughs> yeah that was uh, that was quite a <laughs> the, uh, story there it's kind of ironic how I grew up, uh, you know, following my dad and, and my and my and my grandfather, and then everything that they did, I wanted to do exactly just like them. Uh, so they were Dodgers fans, and I kind of was grown up that way and uh, brought up that way, and they just, I mean. <laughs> And then you're picked by the Giants. <laughs> That's what's funny about it. I got drafted by the Giants, and uh, I mean, my dad was so excited. He he understood just an opportunity was what uh, all that mattered to me most. But I called my grandpa and I was like, "Hey, grandpa, I got drafted." And, uh, his exact words were, well, "I'm so proud of you, Neil. On uh, what team?" Uh, my answer was exactly well that's the that's the thing and he goes he knew right away no anybody but them anybody but the Giants and I was like yeah well grandpa it is what it is right and uh, sure enough as the time's gone by uh, let's just say I've seen him wearing a Giants shirt or two or a Giants hat or <laughs> I'm a sure. here and there <laughs> two balls and a strike on Hunter Pence who fly to center his first time up one out nobody on and Fister breaking ball is nasty swing and a miss did you see that were you in the dugout when that ball went off the head of Doug Fister yes oh what a scary moment you don't ever want to see that that's for sure but uh, very glad he's fine I mean especially for him and his health you know uh, but I mean, like in baseball you, you never really know what's going to happen next and that's definitely an example of that two balls two strikes with one out nobody on you you guys uh First of all, I saw you walking around in the clubhouse with like a wrestling mask on <laughs> earlier today. You guys have more fun in your clubhouse. Wilson's bouncing around, and uh, I mean that look on your face. That's you guys. I don't see any or feel any stress from you all, even though these games are in the World Series. Is that accurate? Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, we're just having fun. Uh, model of our team is uh, play for the guy next to you. The smile on my teammates' face matters more than the smile on my face, and uh, any way to contribute, any way to put that smile on their faces what really matters to us. And uh, I mean, what a fun ride it really has been. Oh! That's oh, foul. See, you got excited. Sorry, guys. No, that's um, all right. But you see the excitement here. They, we all believe that we, you know, we're, we're just a, a legitimate team. We may not be the most talented or have the biggest names or whatnot, but we're a solid group of guys. We care about each other, and if there's no personal, like, time to shine. You know I mean? There, there's not, that's not what we're seeking. Uh, we, we all just want to be as good as we can be, and we understand that as a group, all successes come really, you know, that's what comes first, you know, and, and, and 
Yeah. What better way to go out as world champs, right? You know, so we're we trying to be that. Hunter Pence has run the count full. Spister is trying to get him to chase. And now a 3 2 pitch from Doug Fister to Pence. Off the hands. It's a foul ball and what an effort, but out of the reach of Prince Fielder. Yeah, that ball did not have enough hang time. Prince appears to be all right. But once again, he is a big, big man. And he took a hard tumble with that slide. What an athletic man. That's for sure. Yeah, Sergio, he's a big guy, but he, he's an unbelievable athlete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I definitely Quick. give him credit for everything that he's done. That's for sure. Prince couldn't get to it. So the at bat continues. The count's still full. And uh, Fister gives Prince a moment to get collected over at first base with one out in the inning. Nobody on, no score fourth. Frame of game number two. Here's a 3 2. And a fly ball into center. Back is Jackson on the run. Two out. Nice play by Austin Jackson going back to get it. Now we've kind of coined this whole thing, Sergio. Uh, Romo bombing or photo bombing. You got Pablo Sandoval earlier tonight. Uh, definitely got him earlier. I mean, I, I mean, I'm getting everybody really. Uh, it, I mean, I, starting a trend. I don't really know what the purpose is of it. It's just being silly. You know, this is just another side of the goofiness that I can bring to the table, I guess. And uh, <laughs> I mean, come on. I feel like a little kid every day. Every day I'm here. What a blessing. That's it. A one, two, three inning. Sergio, thanks. We may see you later tonight. You guys already know. All right. He's a beauty. Great guy. Sergio Romo. He's been having fun. No score after four game two. Back after this from your local Fox station. The fifth inning, no score. Here's Aaron Andrews. 
Well, Joe, Foxtober Fest continues on Saturday afternoon. We have number 14, Texas Tech, taking on number three, Kansas State. Of course, Eddie, Joey, and I will have the studio show for you at 3 p.m. Eastern. We have a good matchup, and obviously, big talk in college football right now is Colin Klein, the quarterback for Kansas State. They're calling him Optimus Klein, and we can see how much he can uh, get everybody putting their votes in for him for the Heisman. He did a good job against Geno Smith in West Virginia last week on our air. All right, great. Thank you, Aaron. That's on Saturday. And then good NFL matchups on Sunday. As Delman Young swings through a pitch, and he's in the hole 0-2. Delman doubled his first time up. There's a matchup, 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific. Texas Tech and K-State. Here's an 0-2. Young goes after it and strikes out. That's number six on the night for Madison Bumgarner. And this start couldn't be going any better for number 40. A lot of people think that control is throwing strikes, but control is throwing a ball when you need to. Ahead 0-2, six strikeouts now for Bumgarner. One out in the inning for Johnny Peralta who popped up. Did so with a runner at second. One out back in the second. That was the best scoring chance tonight for the Tigers. Fielder let off was hit by a pitch. Then a double down the line by Young. Relay got Prince Fielder at the plate. The biggest chance for the Giants against Fister was when they loaded the bases but had Bumgarner at the plate. He popped into shallow left. Strike one on Johnny Peralta. First two games, eight innings combined, ten earned runs. He lost game two of the division series against Cincinnati, nine to nothing, and then game one of the NLCS, six to four. Could not go five innings in either start. Here's a pop up into right. Pence drifting makes the catch two out. Our video game summary is presented by Windows 8. And it's that play at the plate. And the relay from Blanco to Scudero to Posey. And you see the good tag to get it on the left leg, left hip of Prince Fielder to keep it scoreless. Here's Garcia. Two hits each side. Garcia struck out his first time. Abaseo stole 23 bases, along with hitting 14 home runs, hit just under 300 in the minors. And he swings right through that one, strike one. 25 years old, and he signed five years ago with the Tigers. At 16 years old. That is the age limit to sign Latin American players. 16. Up and away, one ball, one strike. Garcia trying to get something started with two out here in the fifth. Kind of an independent look. The hands, good pitch. Scudero gets the out, and another one-two-three inning for Madison Bumgarner in what's turned into a pitcher's duel here in Game Two of the World Series. Halfway through it, no score.
completely redesigned 2013 Chevrolet Malibu. That's one way to get a view without a ticket. And a comparison of the two starters. Fister back to work, bottom of the fifth, no score. Each side with two hits, that's it. Well, last night, thanks to Tim Barry Manilow, who was trending on Twitter. Heard. And Kenny Rosenthal, what's going on after our little chat with Sergio Romo? Well, Mr. Romo is now trending worldwide, and there are quite a number of people out there who enjoyed his stylings during that inning. Here is Fister off the mound to get the out, and thankfully for Detroit, Fielder was able to get his arm back close to his body and out of the way of Gregor Blanco, who tried to bunt his way on. That was dangerous. Watch Fielder pick it and bring his left arm back. Hit out of the way. And Doug Fister just showed us, and the bump wasn't that good, but Doug Fister just showed us a little bit of what Jim Leland talked about. He said he is our best fielding pitcher, even though he's a big guy, 6'8". He bounces off the mound and made that play. Here's Crawford. He takes over below ball one. Brandon walked his first time. Bumgarner on deck. Good game, game two. with different counts who try to do different things as a hitter with the pitcher coming up Crawford will be trying to pull the ball looking for something inside like that and it's two and one Fister just peeking over that glove as well. Brings home a 2 1 to Brandon Crawford. Got the outside corner 2 2. Well framed by Laird, the catcher. And with one out, nobody on. Crawford is jammed. He fouls it. Direction of Jim Leland. Who is working on a one year deal? General Manager Dave Dombrowski, we showed earlier, said, I told Jim he's welcome back. There was a time during the season when this big payroll, the Tigers weren't in first place, and that wasn't a done deal. But basically, Dombrowski has said that if Jim Leland wants to come back, he'll be the Tiger manager in 2013. Here's a 2 2. That's down toward where Sergio Romo was earlier, and now Guillermo Moda is over there. But he wasn't alone. Ball in that third base dugout from left handed batters. They're always aware. Right handers, no chance. But left handers, you've got to be alive, and they work. Aaron Andrews down there as well. And her shadow, Jimmy Delmonico. JD. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Just outside a full count. With one out, Crawford checks on Peralta. Has to wait on it. Low throw, but out. Two gone. Madison Bumgarner, who popped a couple of home runs this season, was 11 of 68, 0 for 3 this postseason. Walks in. Madison had a chance with the bases loaded, two out his last time. But popped out in the shallow left 
Peralta went out to grab it, the shortstop. Here's a 1 0 from Fister. You see Bumgarner can swing the bat. 1 1. A couple of home runs for Madison this year. He has power. Stays inside. It's two and one. Switch hitting Pagan on deck. Fister. Right in on the fists, and it's a two-two count. Fister not showing any ill effects from that line drive that hit him to the right side of the head back in the second inning. Nice to see. That foul tip got Laird. Count still two and two. He's thrown 54 pitches since he got hit in the head on that line drive back up the middle by Blanco. He has brought his usual good stuff with him to the park. If you're just joining us, back in the second, Doug Fister. Delivered a pitch and Blanco lined one back up the middle and he tried to get his glove up. The ball glanced off the right side of his head and then into center field for a base hit. They checked on him. He said he was okay and now he has struck out three on the night. Allowed no runs on two hits and that sends us into the sixth. What a game. What a pitching matchup. No score. Layaway is back at Walmart on select items now through December 14th and by Bank of America, the official bank of Major League Baseball. Zeros on each side. Nothing, nothing with Laird, Fister, and Austin Jackson coming up. Bumgarner's been great tonight. He's done a lot of that. First pitch strikes. 
as he is ahead on the count to Laird. That is just down and away, a ball and a strike. Things are so difficult to adjust in the postseason. You don't have the time nor the luxury, but Dave Bergetti, the pitching coach of the Giants, has just done a very good job with his 23 year old left hander. That's backing out of play. And a left hander who, since 2009, when he came up at the age of 20, has the fifth best ERA in baseball among left handed starters. Strikeout number seven. And that's how the sixth inning begins. You can join Major League Baseball in helping those veterans who have done so much to help us. Log on to welcomebackveterans.org for more information on how you can make a difference. Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan. That's a live shot. And hopefully, uh, Taste of home and some normalcy for the women and men serving overseas. Earlier in the game, we had a shot of them and they were doing the wave. <laughs> it's great. Here is Fister, throws right, bats left, and takes low ball one. That all transpired after one of the more moving ceremonial first pitches that we've seen in a long time. Down and away, 2 0. Oh. Nicholas Kimmel, 22 year old, corporal in the U.S. Marine Corps from Washington, graduated high school in 2008. So we're reminded how young these men and women are. Here's a ground ball to Scudero. And that's out number two here in the sixth inning. Join the Marines, Nicholas did in September of 2008. Four years of service, and he is a triple amputee with the great Willie Mays, Barry Zito, Sergio Romo, who caught the pitch, which he does every day here in San Francisco. Nicholas was injured December 1st last year while on his second tour of duty in Afghanistan. Lost both legs, his left arm in a blast. He's great friends to Barry Zito, Matt Kane, Javier Lopez, and Barry Zito does a lot. Not alone on this Giants team, but a lot for veterans coming back home. So a Purple Heart recipient. Nicholas Kimmel with a great first pitch. Three right strike. In the middle. Yeah, yeah. through a strike. The two out, nobody on. Here's a 2 0. Jackson, strike one. Barry Zito has a foundation strikeouts for troops. He started seven years ago, providing the comforts of home and lifting the spirits and morale of wounded troops. And so good for him. A nice moment for Nicholas Kimmel. World Series game number two. That's down the line, but that is foul. Into the corner, two and two. Austin Jackson hit 16 home runs during the regular season. He was sitting on that inside fastball then to try to give Detroit the lead. Instead, he could become the eighth strikeout victim for Bumgarner. The 2-2. Two -two. Oh. Then a full count. With two out. That's low. And the first walk issued by Bumgarner in this game. Keeps the top of the sixth inning alive for Infante. Coming into tonight, 
San Francisco Giants pitching over the last four games has gone four and zero, oh, obviously, but an ERA of one, and an opponent's batting average against of 201. Zito's been a big part of that. Made two of the starts over those last four games. Started tonight on regular rest. That is a foul ball. And you see if Austin Jackson wants to do any running during this at bat with Infante at the plate. I don't think so. He has not stolen a base against a left hander this year. 12 stolen bases. He's been caught nine times. The odds are against him. Bumgarner has already picked off one runner tonight. And that was Omar Infante. Omar's at the plate with two out. The 0 1. Ripped down into the corner but foul. Strike two. We've seen a couple of hard hit balls the last two batters. The two right handed batters pulled foul down the line. Yeah, Joe, third time through the lineup. So the right handed batters for the Tigers look for them to look for that inside fastball that's been so successful. For Bumgarner tonight. The deeper you go, the tougher it is to pitch to these guys. Strikeout NZ inning. Number eight on the night, two in the frame. We go into the bottom of the sixth inning as we thank our troops in Afghanistan and around the world. World Series, game two, scoreless after five and a half.
sixth inning, game two. Doug Fister delivers ball one to Angel Pagan, top of the lineup for the Giants. Ryan Biederman and Victor Gonzalez put those videos together for us night after night during October, and nobody does it better than those two. One ball, one strike on Angel Pagan. It was struck out, grounded out. Scudero next, and then Sandoval. Here's a 1 1. That goes around the plate. Ball two. Fister can't do much better. He's allowed no runs on two hits, struck out three, walked one. That is just up. And it's three and one. So far, Joe, Doug Fister's done a good job of pitching downhill. When you pitch downhill, you get the ball down. And at 6-8, it's more difficult for Doug than other pitchers. Here is his 3-1. On the inside part of full count. We have seen many examples, and Pagan has specifically, that good late movement that Fister features. His 3-2. Is slash foul. It's not a sinking fastball. It's a tailing fastball. There's a big difference. Into center. Back is Jackson and to his right. Well in front of the track, he has out number one, and Pagan 0 for 3 tonight. He had a real good at bat last night, which could get overlooked. Yes, the ball did hit the bag on that chopper, but it was at the end of a good at bat against Furlander. Then Scudero got a base hit to score Pagan. Sandoval hit his second of three home runs. The other way to left. With two strikes, you keep fouling them off till you catch a break. Scudero, strike one. Marcos grounded out twice. That is a foul ball. Strike two. Geico in game box score for the Giants. Only two hits. Posey had a leadoff base hit to right in the second. And Blanco is the one who lined the ball back off the right side of the head of Doug Fister and into center. By the way, he brought up the name of Brandon McCarthy during the replays of that. And he tweeted that he's doing fine. Oh, that's great. From our social media hawk, Ken Rosenthal. Here's the 0-2. Fister put that right where he wanted, and Scudero didn't go after it. You could hear Don or Dan Ayasonia say that ball was outside, just barely. Still one and two. I'll tell you, Joe, you made mention of it a couple of innings ago. These umpires are on point tonight. They are honed in. Another one two breaking ball in the dirt smothered by Laird two and two. Scudero is grounded a short two times. An 11 game hitting streak is on the line as we get deeper into this game. Gets under it pops it up left side and Cabrera has got to play. Two up. Here comes Panda. Third baseman, number 48, Pablo Sandoval. We had a great talk with Bruce Bochy before the game about Sandoval, who only had three at bats in the World Series two Octobers ago. During that season, he got. Really heavy to the point where he couldn't move around very well. 
then that offseason he really went to work on his body and last year had a great year. Bruce Pochi said we're going to get after him again this upcoming offseason so he can shed some weight leading into 2013. But right now we're just letting him go. And whereas he'd been working out before and after games doing a lot of cardio he has not been doing that during the postseason and he's been hot and he gets a base hit into right with two out in the sixth. Bochy said maybe not doing some of that cardio before and after games has allowed him to be a little fresher and he is swinging like it here over the last 11 games. Yeah Joe with that body type he's just got to do a lot more work than most people to stay fit and trim or as much as he can third hit of the game for the Giants and it brings in Buster Posey as Drew Smiley the left hander gets loose he was a big part of the game one win the next innings at Yankee Stadium in the ALCS here's Posey breaking ball is low so over 100 pitches on the night Pitch number 101 extended this frame on the base hit by Sandoval. Strike one. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal more on Pablo. Well, Joe, Pablo Sandoval received more than 300 text messages last night after his three homer game. But his favorite one came from his mom, who was watching at a family barbecue in Puerto Cabello, Venezuela. First, after his first home run, she was happy. After his second, she was crying. And after his third, she said, don't stop dreaming like this. Don't wake up. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, that kind of goes for the Giants. Don't wake up. Rely on your instincts. Don't think too much. Two balls and a strike. And now Sergio Romo has added a glove just in case. Two foul balls have whistled down at the end of the bench. Good pitch, strike two, two and two. Sergio's already caught a first pitch tonight. He loves to do that. You talked about it earlier. He badgers Bruce Bochy. He wants to catch the first pitch every night. Meaning the ceremonial first pitch. Yeah, right. One on, two out, two balls, two strikes. And that is just inside. And not only did Fister start to walk away, so did three of the infielders thinking this was strike three. Yeah, it was well inside. Laird is setting up outside, and the ball stayed in off the plate. Good strike zone discipline shown by Dan Iasonia, the plate umpire tonight. Runner will go. 3 2 pitch. We'll do it again. So Pablo getting his cardio in now. <laughs> I think the only thing that'll score Sandoval is a ball in the gap. And for that reason, the Tigers defense in the outfield playing about three or four steps deeper than they normally would. Cut down on that ball in the gap. Runner at first, two out, three balls, two strikes. Jammed him. Shallow left, and in comes Delman Young to end the inning. Had to come a long way. Giants have stranded four. Still no score back after this from your local Fox station.
Paul Cabrera will lead it off for the Tigers in the seventh. Fielder will follow, and then Delman Young, the three, four, and five hitters. Bumgarner has handled Cabrera so far. When we were talking about Bochi, he made his decision to give Bumgarner a start in this World Series. He said, well, how did you go about that? And talk to him and gauge the confidence that the 23-year-old left-hander had. Comes the first pitch to Cabrera. Outside ball one because Bumgarner, after that game one start in the NLCS, didn't like his stuff and did not sound confident. Didn't sound as confident as Bruce Bochi was in him. And Bochi, during the off day, said, I'm going to give you a start unless you're scared. And Bumgarner said, I'm not scared. Give me the ball. Bruce knew that too. Here's a 1 0. 2 0. This is the most dangerous situation he's been in thus far. He was 2-0 to Cabrera the last time up. Cabrera lined the third. Sandoval on the line, by the way. To protect against the extra base hit. Here's a 2-0. In for strike one. No action for the Giants in their bullpen. Smiley and Dotel, lefty and a righty, getting ready for the Tigers in their pen. Here's a 2 1. Got it by him. 90 miles per hour from Bumgarner. It's 2 and 2. Struck out eight. And Cabrera with that good plate coverage fouls it back still two and two. That's why he doesn't strike out that much. He struck out 98 times this year for a man with that much power, 44 home runs. That is not a lot of strikeouts. And it's because he stays alive on tough pitches. That was a nasty pitch on the outside corner. Cabrera still there. So another 2 2 pitch. Cabrera gets time. Miguel with 44 home runs during the regular season leans back from ball three. Still only 29 years old is Miguel Cabrera. What's it going to be on three and two? Popped up back and out of play. Pitch will be the ninth of this at bat. On three and two. Just outside, and Posey popped up. Like he was going to throw it around the horn. Instead, it's a leadoff walk. Nine pitches, and here they are. The first two miss outside. 2-0. 2-1. 2-2. Fouls 
it off. Takes the ball. 3-2. Fouls two off. Just low. And Bruce Bochy thought that was strike three instead of ball four. Now Fielder trying to pump one out of here. Strike one. Triple crown winners get that pitch. A 3-2 pitch just low. Big swing by Prince Fielder. He protected last year's MVP Ryan Braun in Milwaukee and protected in the lineup. Potential MVP in Miguel Cabrera. That's back to Bumgarner. Out. Got them both. With the left-handed hitter up and chances of him pulling the ball, the shortstop is covering. One hopper to Bumgarner. Easy 1-6-3 double play. And Madison is now one out away from pitching seven innings here tonight. Seven shutout innings as he deals with Delman Young. Delman has doubled. He has the only extra base hit of this game. That was in his first at bat in the second. He struck out his next time up. Think about this World Series because of the rest. Detroit had their pitching lined up with Verlander for game one. They could line it up any way they wanted. The Giants went seven games with St. Louis and they had to start with Zito and now give another start to Bumgarner as Young fouls it away. They kept Lincecum in the bullpen. He was another option. But now the Giants, when we go to Detroit, have Fogelsong, who's been so good this postseason, and then their race. Matt Payne against Sanchez and Scherzer in games four and five. Yeah, in game three, the Giants are more in order for the rest of the series. Here is a 1 1 instead. Bumgarner stops and wants a different baseball. Sometimes you, that ball becomes so slick, you feel that, and obviously, best to get rid of it. Verlander in game one. Went only four innings. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Young. Left side. Crawford stays down on it, gets the out. And what a job tonight by the 23 year old left hander, Madison Bumgarner. Seven shutout innings. Our Nikon replay. We focus on the Tigers who have lost two on the bases. Fielder at the plate. Infante caught stealing when he left too soon. Cabrera with a line drive that was smoked but caught by Pablo Sandoval. It's been close, but no runs for Detroit. Down one game to nothing. And here in the top of the seventh inning, Bumgarner, after the leadoff walk, gets Fielder to hit into a 1-6-3 double play. Let's now go to the public address announcer, Rennell Brooks Moon, for the introduction of God Bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your caps as we honor America and our military troops around the world with the singing of God Bless America. Please welcome, from the rescue wing base out of Moffett Field, Staff Sergeant Dan Olivas. Bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam.
Open a Pepsi and live for now by Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Phone, tablet, best of both. The next big thing is here by the completely redesigned 2013 Chevrolet Malibu. As we go into the bottom of the seventh inning, Don Kelly takes over in left field. So after that last out and the final at bat by Delman Young, he's taken out and the Tigers improve their defense. Fister is still in the ball game and he deals low with pitch number 109 for ball one to Pence. Well, speaking of defense, Prince Fielder is back at first base and part of Hunter Pence's game is the push bunt to the right side. One ball, one strike. He has struggled for a game and a half. He's 0 for 6 with three strikeouts and has not looked good against Doug Fister. Nine of 54 this postseason is Pence. And now he's in the hole one and two. On deck is Belt. The bullpen is Smiley and Dotel. Bottom of the seventh inning, no score, and that is just down and away. Pence is a free swinger, was able to lay off two and two. The next. That's foul. You got the left handed hitting belt, and then Blanco, then Crawford. So that's why the Tigers have Bruce Smiley up yet again. Here's a 2 2. Ground ball, base hit, left field. Pence is on to start the seventh. We'll see if that's it for Doug Fister. That base hit will chase the Tiger starter. Gets the game scoreless into the bottom of the seventh. He survived that line drive that caught him on the right side of his head. But he leaves with a man on, nobody out. And the lefty, Drew Smiley, takes over.
again his third strong start of this postseason. But if he gets a decision, it can only be a loss as he leaves with the runner at first, nobody out. Gets a hug from his pitching coach Jeff Jones, and now the Tigers make a switch in pitchers. Jenny O invites you to switch to Turkey. And it's Drew Smiley, the rookie left-hander, who was the winner in game one of the ALCS. The two shutout innings allowing just a hit. And the extra inning win. Ball one up and away to Brandon Belt. Is it a surprise that he's not bunning? No. He has never laid down a sacrifice in his professional career. Yet he looks down at Tim Flannery. The third base coach with the go ahead run at first. Nobody out. Here comes a 1 0 pitch. Down and away, 2 and 0. Left handers hit 224 off Smiley, who was on the DL two times this season. Santiago Casilla getting ready. Hunter Pence wants to run. Belt comes up empty, two and one. Good pitch to hit, two and zero. Oh. Knew the fastball was coming. The ball a little bit low, probably ball three. Here is a two-one pitch from Smiley. That's right side foul ball. First base umpire fielding Colbert right behind Prince Fielder yelling out foul. Watch the arms go up. Foul. So the count now two and two. Belt is struck out, lined out. Now dealing with a left-hander. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Adam reaching for it again. On deck is the left-handed hitting Blanco. Giants have a bench with right-handed batters Arias, Nady, and Terrio. Switch hitter is Hector Sanchez, the other catcher. Here's a 2 2. Upstairs, a full count. Interesting situation. You have Hunter Pence, a base stealing threat at first base. But you have Brandon Bell, who could swing through a fastball, even though he knows it's coming. So will they start Pence? Not going on ball four. And it's two on with nobody out here in the seventh inning. Now you're going to see the bunt with Bronco. And here comes Jeff Jones, the pitching coach. Took over last July full time as the man in charge of the staff for Jim Leland. I think uh, what Jeff Jones is out there to do is to talk to the infielders as much as the pitcher. If you're a left handed pitcher when you release the ball you break toward the line. Knowing the first baseman is going to follow you and the first baseman Prince Fielder has your back. So throw the ball break toward the line he's talking to Miguel Cabrera about what Cabrera does as Blanco will try to butt the ball down the third baseline. Saw that graphic game three on Saturday night on the air 730 Eastern 430 Pacific. After a travel day tomorrow when Vogelsong takes on Sanchez. Well, here you go no score bottom of the seventh inning two on nobody out Blanco at the plate. Ball one. Block 
Blanco will try to bunt the ball hard down the third baseline to make Cabrera field the ball. Here is a 1 0. That's ball two. And Drew Smiley has been a starter, still learning the bullpen, is right into the heat of this World Series as he's fallen behind Gregor Blanco, who's up there to bunt. Where the Tigers are, Tim, in this bullpen. This is where a guy like Jim Leland earns his money, as they've now had to reconfigure the back end of this bullpen. With Phil Cope taking over as the closer. He's got Benoit, another guy who could from the right side, even Dotel. But because Valverde's been so ineffective, it changes everybody's role down there. Benoit has the best stuff. Cope is the hottest pitcher, the left-hander. Here's a 2 1. That's low. 3 and 1. are loaded on this from Gregor Blanco. The Giants continue to make their breaks. We talked about it in the opening. The ball hits the bag last night. A double for Pagan. He scores, and now a ball that seemingly was going foul stays fair. Man. Bases are loaded with nobody out for Crawford. Ball one up and in from Smiley. to the second baseman, out at second, out at first, the run scores, and the Giants lead 1-0 in game two. No RBI, but the first run has crossed the plate, and it was Hunter Pence who got the inning started with a base hit. You might say, why not play the infield in if you're Jim Leland? The odds are against. So you play for the double play, even though a run will score, and even though it's the seventh inning. Now it's Terrio. Runner at third, two out. One nothing Giants. Ball one inside. Had you played the infield in in that situation, unless the ball is back to the pitcher, you're not going to get a double play. You get one out. So that's why Leland had the infield in double play depth and not in. We see it getting ready, it looks like, for the eighth inning. And Peralta, Garcia, and Laird come to the plate. Time called at the plate. As the Giants... Try to add to their lead. It's up to Terrio. He's two out of five, three RBIs this postseason. A strike. And it's one and one. Here 
is a 1 1. Bumgarner's night is finished. He goes seven. No runs allowed on just two hits. Walk two, struck out eight. And what a turnaround performance by the still young left hander, Madison Bumgarner. Here is a 2 1 pitch. 2 and 2. later of eight shutout innings in game four of the World Series in 2010. Terrio with two key hits against the Cardinals in the late championship series. A strikeout and Laird gets hit on the follow through by Terrio. That's that backswing of Terrio. Gerald appears to be all right, but the Giants strike for one. They do. They get one, and then you see the bat knock the mask almost off the face of Jared Laird. Game two. A bunt that stayed fair, that set it up for Crawford. Who drove home the first run of the night? One nothing, San Francisco. Up one game to nothing as we played through seven.
Neff of the Fox Comedy Series Raising Hope, joined by Nat Faxon and Echo Kellum of the comedy Ben and Kate. That's Tuesdays on Fox. Santiago Casilla takes over. Bumgarner was great. Seven innings, no runs, two hits, eight strikeouts, two walks. Johnny Peralta first up, he's 0 for 2. Strike one. This is the part of the game that you talked about leading into game one last night. The late inning options for Bruce Bochy out of his bullpen compared to the unknowns that Jim Leland has with his closer Valverde. I think the three left handers make the giant bullpen a lot tougher than the Detroit bullpen. Off the end of the back strike two. One of those left hander is is Jeremy Affel. Side. It stays 0 and 2. This San Francisco team, in front of these great fans, have been making so much noise. Lost their first two games to Cincinnati at home. Lost Game One of the NLCS here at home to St. Louis. Then they won Game Two. They won Game Six and Seven. They won last night, trying to win tonight. Leading by one. Top of the eighth inning. The 0-2. Up. And it's belt. One away. This year, two lucky consumers won the chance to play with MLB legends through the Pepsi Max Field of Dreams program. Fans voted. The game will be played in the hometown of AL consumer winner Johnny Parati from Rochester, New York. Parati, his friends, and five AL MLB legends will host the NL consumer winner Stephen Catchmark from Washington, D.C. Log on to MLB.com slash Pepsi Max for details. Frank Thomas, Ricky Henderson, the shot at the end and with one out, nobody on. The batter will be Andy Dirks. Batting for Garcia. The one out, nobody on to the ball. Dirks had a great year with a bat, hit 322. Pinch hit last night, made it out. So 0 for 1 in this World Series, and the Cal 1 and 1. on one and one grounds to the right side there is Scudero two out and the batter will be Gerald Laird who's 0 for 2 tonight Scudero even though he's been held hitless tonight He's already factored into that relay to the plate to cut down Prince Fielder back in the second. Seems like yesterday. And he has shown great range at second base as this Giants team has gotten so much stronger up the middle. In the second half of the season with the addition of Scudero, Crawford's played much better at short. And Pagan is a very good defensive center fielder, and that doesn't even count the guy that starts... The action with the signs behind home plate, Buster Posey. That's a strike, and it's one and one. When that tag was made by Posey on Prince Fielder in the second inning, nobody realized that that 
play would be paramount at this time of the game. Here's a 1-1 ground ball to short. That's Crawford. And that's the end of the inning. And more good work from this Giants bullpen and more frustration for the Tigers tonight. Bottom of the eighth inning rolls in. Giants back, game two, leading 1-0. Series is sponsored by the Nikon One, a different kind of Nikon by Genio Turkey Store. Make the switch. Look for Genio Turkey at a store near you. And by Windows 8. Andy Dirks, who pinch hit, stays in the game and right. It's the only change as Drew Smiley goes back to the hill. Jim Leland wants Pagan to bat right-handed. First pitch in the dirt. Then you've got the right-handed hitting Scudero. And the switch hitter Sandoval. All six of Pablo's home runs this postseason have come batting left-handed. Two and zero. Oh. Fister is on the hook for the loss. If the Tigers don't rally in the ninth. There's a 2-0. High from Smiley, 3-0. That's ball four. And the second walk handed out by Smiley, who asks where that missed. And it's our Nikon replay, the difference in this game. The run that scored in the seventh. Base hit by Pence after a walk. The bunt by Blanco that stayed fair. 
the bases and the double play ball off the bat of Crawford. Played it the only run of the night. I think Jim Leland's leaving Smiley out there because he knows Scudero's going to bunt or he's going to take a chance on that. Now he wants Gerald Laird to talk to Smiley to get the right hander in the bullpen a chance to get warm. Here's Drew Smiley's reaction after that walk. Ask him where the pitch missed. It missed evidently low. You have to believe we're going to see Dotel in this inning. Yeah, but you don't want to bring him in to Sandoval, probably. Right. You want the left hander against Sandoval since he homered three times from the left side last night. Sergio Romo getting loose. And no sign of a bunt by Scudero, and shouldn't be that surprising. He is over three tonight, but because of that combo of Scudero and Sandoval in front of Buster Posey, the way they've been swinging the bats, Bruce Bochy will take his chances. Now he shows and he bunts in the air. Back and out of play, the count 0 and 2. If Scudero bunts, gone down to second. We had a meeting with Jim Leland before the game. He said now I'm in a position where I'm going to have to walk Sandoval in certain situations and pitch to a guy that led the league and hit it and likely MVP. Of course, Buster Posey behind him. Of course the bunts off now with two strikes. scooter has been too hot. Smiley steps off. Bochy has had a hot hand in that dugout making decisions with his staff. That is just high. Smiley, I'm sure, feels like he's getting squeezed. Ball one. So the rookie left hander is being tested here in the eighth. Corner, it is foul. Scooter was trying to will that thing fair. I don't know that he ever dropped the bat going down the first baseline. He's got Pagan at first, nobody out, and a 1 2 count. Just like Gregor Blanco will that bunt fair. He had about 47,000 helpers here. Here's Scooter Owen, his reaction with that ball going <laughs> down the corner. But foul by about 10 feet. A one two got him looking and a big strikeout for Drew Smiley trying to keep this a one run game. One of the rare strikeouts of Marco Scudero. And now with Smiley still in the ball game, Sandoval, the switch hitting third baseman, will dig his way in. His damage. Power has come from the other side of the plate this postseason. But Dotel is still down there getting ready with Posey on deck. Runner goes. And a stolen base for Angel Pagan. How could Gerald Laird? Make a better throw. That throw is right on the money, right on the shoelaces, and Pagan with too big a jump. That for Angel Pagan is his first steal of this postseason. He did get in there, and with that stolen base, everyone in America can get a free Doritos Locos taco 
on Tuesday, October 30th from 2 to 6 p.m. at any participating Taco Bell location. So there you go. Now first base is open, and there's the intentional walk to Sandoval. And Buster Posey, who led Major League Baseball when he hit 336 during the regular season, will come on to hit. But Dotel will come out of the bullpen. That's a third walk issued by Smiley. And Jim Leland will make the change. It'll be a double switch. Pitcher's spot is due to lead off in the ninth inning. Dotel will come into the ball game out of the bullpen. And the reaction from Pagan calling time after the steal. Good throw by Laird, but a stolen base nonetheless. Pitching change. in the ninth inning batting in the number nine spot he takes over and left Don Kelly moves from left to right Andy Dirks is out of the game the pitcher will bat in the seven spot the new pitcher is Octavio Dotel there are his numbers this postseason game number five for him two on one out Buster Posey first up ball one inside Here's the night for Posey, a base hit through the right side his first time. Trying to add to a one to nothing lead as the Giants try and win the first two here at home. A 1 0 pitch. Ball outside. Just outside, 2 0. Dotel didn't agree. 13th organization for Octavio Dotel, who was. Part of a world championship last year in St. Louis. Phil Coke, who is in essence the closer now for the Tigers, will start to get loose. Here is a 2 0 pitch. And with Infante. 
Dante going back to the bag to try and hold Pagan close. Dotel steps off. Sergio Romo is getting ready to come in and try and close it. Wheels are turning here in the eighth. who had a base hit his last time up and has scored the only run all night. Waits on deck. That is inside to load him up. And now it falls to Pence. Halfway for the infielders. If the ball's not hit hard to the shortstop or the second baseman, they'll come home with the ball. If it's hit hard, they'll try to double up Pence. One out in the inning. So a double play would get the Tigers out of trouble and keep this a one run game. Pence has three RBIs this entire postseason. Here's Pence. Strike one. On the outer edge of the strike zone. 0 1. Americo with the last World Series Grand Slam in game two, 2005. And that sweep over Houston. Pagan. Sandoval Posey, the runners. One out. The 0 1. Same spot. Strike two. Two picture perfect fastballs in a row by Dotel. Right there. Four walks issued by the combination of Smiley and Dotel. Since taking over for Fister last inning, here comes an 0 2. Spoiled it. Footed fouls it back, reach and hope. Bases are loaded, one out, and an 0 2 count on Pence. Dotel deals, and Hunter fouls it back to the right. If Gerald Laird continues to go farther outside, he's going to be in the Detroit dugout. The first pitch was just off the plate. That one, Gerald was sitting about six inches off the plate away. I would imagine he'll go right back out there with a fastball. The stadium ready to erupt. Another foul. That was a mistake. That was a hanger right there. A spinning slider. Look at Laird. Sitting way outside and had to reach back to his left. Dotel got away with one there. Octavio ready with another. On 0 and 2. Center. That's going to be deep enough. Pagan tags. It's two nothing. A good at bat by Hunter Pence, who fell behind 0 and 2 and got enough on that fly ball to right to score Pagan to make it two nothing. And that's going to be it. For Dotel. Phil Cope with Belt coming up. First and third, two out. 
Pagan crosses the plate. He started this inning with a walk, and Pence did his job. 2 nothing Giants. One. What a gutty at bat. Two perfect fastballs to start out. Now watch this 0-2 pitch. Just pokes at it. Pokes at it. Slider. Mistake. Fastball mistake. And he hits it deep enough to score the second run of the game for the Giants. Boy, the Giants have done so much right Ooh. over the past five games. In game five of the NLCS in St. Louis as Phil Coke takes over. He's had a great postseason. No runs. Two saves. This is his eighth postseason appearance this year. First and third, two out. Strike one on Belt. But from game five on, I and mean, they've gotten the pitching out of their starter. They've gotten great work in relief. They've had timely hits. They've had some power from Sandoval. Now Sergio Romo, who we talked to back in the fourth inning, is getting ready to come in and try and get a save and put the Giants up two games to nothing. He will have at least a two-run cushion. Here's an 0-1. What a good play by Laird to save a run. Two in a row. The first one, he smothered. A tougher play right here. The slider. Good play by Gerald Laird. Change the entire dynamic of this inning by making a great throw on the stolen base attempt by Pagan, but Angel got in there. That was a very important stolen base. Here's a 1 1. Belt lays off again. It's 2 and 1. That made Jim Leland walk Pablo Sandoval, and then Dotel came in the game. And he walked Posey, and that set it up for the sack fly. A walk by Smiley when he took over in the seventh. The runner at first, nobody out. So, wildness out of the bullpen for Detroit. It's cost him. Here comes a 2 1 pitch from Cope. Strike two. Laird makes two good plays in the dirt, and that's his payment. 
right off the mask. Hope has that exaggerated move to come set and then takes an extra breath. It's not too far away from the ball. But if he does it every time, it's no ball. That's his natural delivery right there. That extra little bounce, and that is just outside. A full count. That is an interesting point, though, Joe. He does it every time it's no ball. But if he delivers the ball without doing that, it would be a ball. Can't deceive the runner with different ways of coming to the stretch. Three, two. Runner goes in a swing and a miss. Struck him out. But in the inning, the Giants get her on, driven in by Hunter Pence. Big stolen base by Pagan. Pays off. Two nothing into the ninth inning as Romo will take over. A few hours ago, Sergio Romo was messing around in the dugout like he always does, his good-natured way, having fun, keeping things loose. Playing around behind Pablo Sandoval. We had a chance to visit with him in the fourth inning, and now Romo, who this postseason has a save, a great ERA. He's been virtually unhittable of late here at home. He's into his eighth postseason game. Joaquin Arias takes over at third base. He'll bat in the number nine spot. The pitcher hitting third. And Quentin Berry is first up for the Tigers, trying to get something started. First at bat for Berry, who is five out of 19 this postseason. Dealing with Romo, who in 2010 got into only one World Series game. And he hits the outside corner, strike one. 
the Tigers aim get Cabrera to the plate because if he hits in this inning he will at least represent the potential tying run two up fourth the 0 1 pitch from Romo in the air to left that'll carry to Blanco one out still only two hits all night for Detroit. Here comes Austin Jackson, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. Jackson takes a strike. Tigers were shut out only twice during the regular season. That is the lowest total in the big leagues. The shutout in the division series against Oakland. Wicked pitch strike two. That's Romo at his best. Slider low and away. I think Jackson gets another one here. And Jackson lays off ball one one and two since the first of August here at home in San Francisco Sergio Romo grew up a Dodger fan. Has not allowed an earned run. With one out. There it is again. Two down. And that pitch is just filthy. Slip sliding away. And now it's up to Omar Infante to get Miguel Cabrera to the plate. Two nothing Giants in the ninth. out of the way of ball one. Omar has one of the two hits tonight for Detroit. The triple crown winner is standing near the on deck circle. The 1 0. 2 0. For the starters, Fister was good. Bumgarner was better. Seven shutout innings from the left hander. He struck out eight. Infante was taking 1 0. We'll be taking again here. slider with a two run lead an idea of how he relies on that pitch
Little pop up. There's Belt. Giants up two games to nothing. Tigers will go home down two games to nothing. The Giants get a win tonight from Madison Bumgarner. There you go. Teams with a 2 nothing lead have won the series 79% of the time. But some good pitching matchups coming up in games three and four in Detroit on Saturday and Sunday. But Joe, the Giants know more than any other team in baseball what it's like to be down 0-2 and try to come back in a series. They did it against Cincinnati. They were down three games to one against the Cardinals, and they came back to win it, so they know Detroit can come back to win it. Bumgarner gets the win. Fister suffers the loss, and Sergio Romo gets his second save of this postseason. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, thanks so much. And Madison just saying, feeling a lot better now. What was the biggest adjustment you made on the mound since the last time we saw you game one at the NLCS? Uh, just able to make pitches tonight. Uh, you know, I haven't done a very good job making pitches this postseason so far. And this is a team that you can't, you're not going to be able to afford to miss with. And, you know, that was what was working tonight, just making pitches, mixing it up. And uh, they hit some balls hard, but luckily we were in the right spot. Bruce Bochy had said the media was questioning, was your arm tired? But you found a mechanical flaw that you were able to work on. What was it? Uh, I mean, I don't want to get into mechanics right now, but it, it's, it was nothing big, just something simple. Uh, but, uh, you know, I felt pretty good out there tonight. And it was, Here's something you'll want to get into. You're up two games to nine, heading to Detroit. This team is used to being down. What does this do for your confidence now, heading out? Uh, definitely feels a whole lot better than uh, having our backs against the wall. Uh, you know, some stressful series is uh, both both the series we played there. Uh, you know, it's tough, so it's uh, it's nice, but we can't relax. We got to keep pushing. All right, thanks so much for your time, Joe. Back over to you. All right, thank you, Aaron. Well, last night the Giants flexed their muscles. Pablo Sandoval did with his three homer night tonight. Small ball. They got a run without an RBI in the seventh. They got a run without a hit in the eighth. And they rode their good pitching. Bumgarner, Casilla, Romo. And they're up two games to nothing with a series heading to Detroit. We'll take a break and come back and continue to wrap up game two after this.